today we are making plates. DIY concrete plates. This is from a guy named Sticks and Stone on Instagram. He sent me some adapters for plates, silicon spray, and most of the stuff we need other than, sweet, the concrete. Well, just so happens that we have a perfect station set up. Random, I know. So let's go over there and start making them. So let's get started. Basically, these are molds from Sticks and Stones. You can make this concrete plate without these. These are definitely gonna be helpful. And they're basically like Atlas Stone molds, so you can just keep reusing them as long as you want. Honestly, this is a genius idea from this guy. He's a maker. He does strongman training, that sort of thing. He's absolutely massive, about half the size of me. So you can just imagine how big he is in person. Um, but we're gonna take his molds and his idea and make DIY concrete weight plates. Weight plates are out of stock right now due to the thing that we don't talk about, AKA the pandemic, AKA COVID-19. Um, but we're gonna stick it to COVID-19 by instead of waiting for plates to come in stock, we're gonna make them ourselves. So I've got all the necessary tools here. You're gonna need your molds or whatever you're gonna place it in. Either, you know, you can use a bucket or something if you fashion something together, but this is kind of just a like halfway DIY way of doing it because I'm doing it myself, but I'm also doing it with something I made or I bought. So whatever, we got the molds. We've got a five pound bucket for mixing concrete. If you have a concrete mixer, good for you. I don't. We've got a about a gallon of water in here. It's definitely not, I didn't measure it, but it's close enough. Then we got a 80 pound bag of high strength concrete. If you're gonna be using these, I would recommend high strength. Um, you want something that has a high tensile strength. It's something that's not gonna like crack really easily. And there's also some tips here I'm gonna show you to make this higher strength. Um, but let's get into it. First step, step number one. I just put up two ones, it's just one. Um, we're gonna be mixing the concrete. You were to take a protein shake and it's not mixed, all clumpy, it tastes bad. Same thing for concrete. Woo! All right, there's my wad work out of the day. All right, now we're gonna pour it in. So. I'd suggest some gloves for these, something real manly. Sorry, wifey, these are all I could find. So, your gardening gloves. All right, so this is the concrete, the consistency right here. It's not too soupy, not too bad, uh, but a, a nice mixture. A couple pro tips on this. It's recommended to spray it with silicone Kind of like how you spray a baking pan with oil. I think it should make it come out quicker and easier. If you didn't do this or you didn't use some sort of paste or something, uh, probably wouldn't fare too well. So I'm just gonna spray it all around on every part of it. He said you don't want to get it too wet. So I'm just making sure it's kind of even all throughout and not really pooling anywhere. Okay, so these came with these little like two inch metal cylinders. These are so there's no uh, concrete that gets into the mold in the middle. So you can put this on the bar easily. Very smart as well. So if you're making these DIY, these are just two inches, probably slightly over in diameter so they can fit onto a barbell. We're gonna silicone these to the bottom on here so that no concrete gets in the middle. So I'm just gonna run some silicone around this here. Let's see if I can do a bead. Good enough, yeah. Okay, this one on here, I'm just gonna turn it 
slightly. Get that off there a little bit. Okay, we are now going to pour our concrete. I don't think there's anything left to do. The owner of this company said to do it kind of slowly and in sections. Um, actually, he said, take it and kind of put the first layer in with your hand. Just do it a little by little. I don't want to get that on my concrete. Get concrete on my concrete. Here we go. If you've ever made Atlas stones, it's a pretty similar process. I mean, this is very similar to that. Put this here. Make sure that's kind of filled in that first layer. And once that first layer is filled and kind of compact, I'm going to shimmy it around. And that's basically to get the air bubbles out because you do not want air bubbles. I'm going to put this on the scale because I want to get it as close to 45 pounds as I can. It's currently reading 39 pounds. Now, I also have to include the weight of the mold, which is going to be about two to three pounds. So make sure you're thinking about that right now 44 pounds there 46 pounds also there's going to be some water that disperses so 47.13 that sounds pretty good to me i'm just going to do it like this this should get me 80% of the way there at least. Agitate it all the way around. You'll start to see the top kind of turn watery and that's how you know you did the right job. We now have a 10 pounder baking in the oven. We have a 45 pounder baking in the oven. Honestly, if you're gonna make these, you probably wanna get two of each mold. Otherwise, you're gonna have to like wait for one to be done. It's just gonna take you forever. So this is what we're working with. Once these are done, we'll come back, we'll show them, we'll weigh them, and we'll test them. See you in a bit. Okay, we're back, boys and girls. Check out the molds. It's been about 48 hours. I have restrained myself from taking them apart. I wanna kinda of show this here so you can see it. All right, I'll watch this. Oh, oh my goodness. That looks sick. Look at this. Wow, dude. That's better than I thought it would look. That Texas logo, everything is bigger and more annoying in Texas. Sorry, guys, you Texans. But all right, so what we're going to do, we're going to take these over to the scale and weigh them, see how accurate they are. See what we got. 43.13. Better, I might say, than most cheap iron plates that you find on the market. So, not exactly 45, but that's pretty good. I'm pretty confident in that. Should've just done a little bit more, so when I do the other pair, I'll make sure to do that. Let's check the 10 pounder. This one was supposed to be 10 pounds. Oh, 11.7. Pretty darn good. We're gonna cut that off there make it flush that's money money in the bank show you what you think all right sweet now all that's left is finish the pair and then we'll show you actually using them by lifting with them let's do it we've got both plates done they are absolutely beautiful as you can see we're going to place them on the barbell see how they fit on the barbell. I'm hoping they fit on the barbell and then we're gonna drop them. I'm gonna drop these on thug rugs. Thug rugs are probably three quarter inch, maybe an inch thick. These are thicker than what most of you have in your garage gym. However, I really don't want these to break. 
Ideally, you'd let them rest about seven days to cure even harder. This is about two days, but I'm gonna drop them from deadlift height, where I think most people would drop them from. This is high strength concrete along with fiberglass. I think it should hold, but this should give us an idea. So as we saw, they've held fine. I'm really tempted to drop one from front rack height. Really don't want them to break, but for science, <laughs> man, if it breaks, I'm gonna be pretty upset. Okay, here we go. We're good. We are solid, bro. Okay, sweet. Well, that should give you pretty good confidence that these aren't gonna crack. You know, if it's like, if you're really worried about it, you probably shouldn't do that. I would honestly set these down if I was deadlifting, but for concrete plates, dropping them from front rack height after two days, that's pretty good. All right, concrete weight plates, DIY. This is Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. What do you think? Would you make them? Do you think they're silly? I think it's pretty cool. See you next time, peace. You are like, what are these? Well, today, why? A, a nice mixture, yeah, cool, cool dude. I'm, I'm shooting a video, okay? So I'll talk to you in a little bit. Cool Batman suit though, dude. Go Batman. Here's something my dad taught me. You can always add more water. You can't take it away. So, Make sure that as you're adding water, you don't add too much too quickly, which I think I just did. I guess you can take some away. Forget what I just said. 